What's up everyone, Chris Record here with another 90 day e-com challenge training. Today is day 11. We're gonna be talking about outsourcing. We're gonna actually go onto a website and show you step by step how to be able to find outsourcers that you can hire very inexpensive to be able to do tasks for you. So if you find yourself doing a lot of repetitive tasks such as order fulfillment, product research, adding products to your store, um, customer support, answering a lot of emails, anything that's repetitive that you find yourself doing over and over and over the same thing, that process could be taught to somebody else and outsourced for a very, very low cost to explode your business. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. With that being said, let's jump over here into the 90 day e -com challenge as I always do. We see people are joining us and uh, if you're joining us right now, just tell me, uh, just kind of chime in. Let me know if you can hear me and see me all right. And then also let me know where in the world you are. I love seeing where people chime in live. And if you're watching the recording, feel free to participate. So we're gonna do things a little bit different today. Today I am going to use a PowerPoint presentation along with some screen sharing. So I'm gonna do both. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna let the audience build up just a little bit and I'm gonna jump into a PowerPoint where I'm going to show you step-by-step -step screenshots on a very popular outsourcing site and be able to show you how to be able to set up your ads. So let's jump into this 90-day challenge doc, as I always do, and let's type it up. So today, we are going to first cover a PowerPoint presentation that will show you step-by-step step how to find and hire outsourcers for your business, okay? Then we are going to go direct to a site called upwork.com and we are going to place an ad, an example ad, and we are going to search and find good quality outsourcers that we can potentially hire. Then I'll explain my system for how I find the best ones and hire them and almost always get great work done for pennies on the dollar. A true win-win situation. So let me know in the comments right now, you guys, who is excited about today's training? Who feels like outsourcing is exactly what you really feel like you need right now? I mean, as your business is growing, do you wanna be the one handling all your own customer support? Do you wanna be the one fulfilling all of your orders? Do you wanna be the one managing all of your social media and all of your content and all of your posts? Do you wanna be the one going and responding to all the comments? Do you wanna be the one going into your Facebook Messenger account and handling all of that? Think about it. At some point, you're gonna to wanna to hire people to do that. Now, you're gonna hire people out of your revenue, of course, okay? It's not really an extra cost. You're just taking a little bit less profit in order to be able to get people to do that work for you. So it's an exciting topic, I'm looking forward to it. All right, with that being said, good. We got about 100 people with us on live and growing by the minute here. So let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, I've never done this before, but we are gonna switch over to PowerPoint, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through a presentation right now called Outsourcing Tips, Hiring on Upwork. And what I wanna do is I just wanna wait and get verification. I'll get verification from, let's say, Peter. Um, Peter, can you show me on the 90 Day Challenge group as long as it's full screen like this? I wanna make sure I just went full screen. Don't wanna keep going unless I can make sure and validate we're in full screen mode, but um, we should be. Okay, so the site I'm gonna talk about today is upwork.com, U-P-W-O-R-K.com. It was formerly known as Odesk, which stood for Outsourcing Desk, but now it's, it's upwork.com. So, um, and here's what I want to do. I want to basically break down. Let me see, Peter. Is it is it full screen, or are you only seeing the? You're still seeing the thumbnails on the left. It's not full screen. Can somebody here tell me? Is it full screen? You're seeing all the thumbnails on the left. Yeah. I don't know how to get rid of that. So looks like we're gonna have to have those. Maybe I go a little bit bigger. Okay. We'll go ahead and do that then. If we can't go full screen. Okay. Outsourcing tips. Hiring on Upwork. Okay. So let's go ahead and go through this. Um, this is the site right here. Let me even make it bigger. Some of you are saying you can't even fully see it. Okay. Okay. Did it go to full screen and then it's change? Okay. We're good enough. I made it a little bit bigger. I want to make sure everybody can see this as good as possible. Let's go up to 170. Okay. 
So this is the site we're gonna work on, Upwork. So what, what you're gonna do today is you're gonna learn about Upwork and you're gonna go set up an account, okay? You're gonna create an account here, it's gonna be free, and you're gonna add a payment, payment profile, some way you're gonna be able to pay outsourcers, but don't worry, you don't have to hire anybody. Just go and take the time as your homework assignment today, go set up an account on Upwork so that you have the ability to hire somebody in a minute's notice even if you need it done. Okay, so when you, when you go in, the first thing it's gonna ask you is what you're looking for. And you're gonna say either I want to hire a freelancer or I'm looking for online work. For those of us in the 90 day challenge, it's the option on the left. I want to hire a freelancer. So that option on the left is the one that you want. Um, you want to basically, you, you're looking to hire. You're not looking to work, you're looking to hire. So because you're looking to hire, you're gonna click that option on the left right there, hire. Then it's gonna take you in and you're gonna create an account, okay? I just kinda skipped that step so you don't have to see my own um, stuff, but you're gonna create an account. I just created a dummy account here. And then when you create an account, it's gonna say, welcome to Upwork. Tell us what you want to get done. So you'll see there, you can choose what type of project you're looking to do. Um, it'll explain how it works. It's pretty simple. You find an outsourcer, you hire them, you work together and you pay for them when the job's done. Okay, so you know what do you want to get done? You see this section here? So I just went ahead and put in, I want to hire a logo designer. What kind of project do you have? Do you have an ongoing project, a one-time project? Um, do you only need one outsourcer? Do you need more than one? So all you do is you basically click the boxes of anything that matters to you. It's very, very simple. Okay, then you're gonna go to the next screen and it's gonna tell you, okay, start posting a job. So you've already described the job. I want to hire a logo designer. Now it's gonna have you confirm some categories of what type of people are you looking for specifically. Well, if you're hiring a logo designer, you're gonna to go to the design and creative category and then you're gonna find the logo design category. Now. For those of you that are not familiar with um, Upwork, what I would do is I would basically go through every single one of these categories. So here's your homework assignment. Go through each one of these categories, um, web, mobile, and software dev, IT and network, data science and analytics, and then, and then hover over it, whatever, and look at the subcategories. I want you to, as a homework assignment, go through each one of these and see what categories are available because it's gonna spark some ideas for some things that you might want. For example, um, you might want somebody, you, you, might, you might come across something you didn't even know you needed. You might want somebody who can remove the watermarks on images for your Shopify store. Um, you might want somebody who can, who can create a video for you um, of several pictures. You might want somebody who can create a lead capture page for you. You might want somebody who can write some emails for you to send to your customers. You know, you never would have thought about that. Whatever it might be, all you do is you just go through as a homework assignment, and go through each category and take notes and kind of go, okay, oh, I would, I would love to at some point have a graphic designer. Oh, great, I would love to have somebody to do videos for me. So kind of go through and see what it is you might need. In this example, I'm gonna choose logo design and branding. Okay, the next thing you do is after confirming your category, you, just, you choose how many freelancers you're looking to hire. So obviously, most of you are starting small, you're just gonna to wanna to hire one freelancer. Okay, so I just chose one. And now enter the skills needed. You can put in whatever the main skill is related to that, like logo design, that's fine. But you're, you might have some specific skills that are needed. So if you have specific skills, feel free to get specific. Um, okay, next, how do you pay them? You have the option to pay, let me go back like, to that screen, how would you like to pay? See rates and availability, pay by the hour or pay by project. Okay, so there's really two kind of options, pay by the hour or pay by project. Let me tell you a little bit of um, methodology behind paying by the hour and paying by project is everybody's gonna have an hourly, hourly wage. You're gonna see people who have like $11 an hour, $5 an hour, $20 an hour, whatever. That hourly wage doesn't really matter. What matters is how many hours does it take to complete the project? So if you were asking for somebody to remove a, a, a watermark from an image, you don't care if their hourly rate is $5 or $20. What you care is how long would this take you? And if they say that it would only take them 10 minutes to do it, well then you can look at their hourly rate and say, okay, they, their hourly rate is $60 an hour, something extremely high, but if it only takes them 10 minutes, maybe they'll just charge 10 bucks to remove a watermark. So it doesn't really matter what somebody's hourly rate is, it matters how long does it take them to complete a task. So just because somebody's cheaper per hour does not mean that they're better. Okay, you gotta, you gotta really kinda take that in consideration. Okay, what's your desired experience level? Um, do you want somebody who's entry level, intermediate, or an expert? Again, that all depends. I, 
I think just for starting, if you're looking for cheap work, feel free to work with entry people just so it doesn't cost you much money. But a lot of times you get what you pay for. So I do, I usually go in and hire experts. Now, the trick to hiring experts is, um, and maybe we'll dive more into this at the end, but the trick to hiring experts is to um, work out a project rate with them. So what I'll do is like an example, I'll, I'll hire an expert to design 10 graphics for t-shirts. 10 t-shirt designs that I could use with print on demand. And so I'll find an expert graphic designer that's an expert at, at designs. And yeah, they're like 30 or 40 or $50 an hour. But what I'll do is I'll basically say, hey, look, I'm looking to do 10 t-shirt designs, you know, and then I'll say, you know, I'll give you all 10 of these designs for, let's say $200. So even though they're $50 an hour, I'll still get them and I'll say, I'll, I'll pay you $200 for 10 t-shirts designs, that's 20 bucks a piece. Or, I'll give you $300 for 10 t-shirt designs. That's $30 a piece per design. So then they'll, they'll often accept the deal. So even though they're an expert at $50 an hour, you still go in there and then you just negotiate a project rate with them. So that's my favorite thing to do. Find people here and negotiate a project rate. And if $300 is out of your budget, then start over here at entry level and try to find somebody who'll do t-shirt designs for like 10 bucks a, a design, okay? But remember, everything is negotiable. Okay, next, how long do you expect this job to last? Do you expect this job to last more than six months, three to six months, one to three months, less than a month, less than one week? You know, I usually find that it's better when you, when you put that it's gonna be ongoing. So I usually put like three to six months or more than six months. What time commitment is required for this job? I usually put less than 30 hours a week because you're gonna get more people that have that time available. Okay, so now is your chance to be able to kind of start building out your job. What do you need help with? what will the freelancer be doing, and what qualities are needed. And this one I just gave real basic stuff. What do you need help with? Logo design for my business clients. What will the freelancer be doing? Designing logos with revisions for my clients. What qualities are needed to be successful? Photoshop, logo design, and graphic design. So I'm really just kind of going in here and being very specific, but I, when I'm really doing this in real time, when I'm not training people, I'll actually be much more descriptive here. Okay, I like being very descriptive when using outsourcers. Okay, next. Um, then you're going to be taken to this section here, okay? So you can search for, find um, freelancers here. So now we're going to go into this whole entire section where now that you've got a job, you can start searching. So I went ahead and put logo design in the search field and there's all of these search options. How, earned amount, job success, hourly rate, hours build, English level, freelancer type, category, last activity. So there's all these boxes. Now this is important. These boxes are this whole section is like basically where the magic happens with outsourcing. So here's my theory. My theory is, um, my, my process is start with a very narrow search and see if you can find the best people for your job. Start narrow and then go broad. So instead of starting broad, start narrow. So an example of broad would be when it says earned amount, you just put any amount earned, I don't care. Okay, whereas narrow would be only show me people that have earned over $10,000. Now, why would you wanna see people that have earned over $10,000? Well, because if they've successfully been paid over $10,000 on Upwork, then they're a, they're, they're a serious outsourcer. They've been doing this. This, is, this isn't their first rodeo. So, you know, at first, what I would suggest is starting narrow. Narrow this down a bunch. Here's what I would choose. Over $10,000 earned, Instead of any job success, I would do 90% and up. Instead of any hourly rate, um, I would probably do like one of the higher hourly, hourly rates. Instead of hours build, I would do over 1,000 hours build. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna try to find who's the best of the best on Upwork. And I'm gonna start there, narrow. I'm gonna go for the best right off the bat. But then I'm gonna go broad, because those people that are the best, they might want too much money, and I don't wanna give them that much money, because you know, Maybe you're a beginner. Maybe your store's not even profitable. Maybe you don't have hundreds of dollars sitting around. So start narrow and then go broad, okay? Do you guys understand that? And if you take a notes, you should take notes on that. Okay, so you know, here's just an example of somewhere in the middle, okay? Earned amount, this is an example of like, hey, at least earned $1,000 or more, 90% up rating, and hourly rate, $10 and below. Show me really cheap people, but that have been paid over $1,000, um, with over a thousand hours built. So show me the really cheap people. 
okay? When it comes to English, I want somebody fluent. When it comes to freelancers, show me the independent ones, not the agencies. I wanna work with independent people. Category, design and creative. Last activity, I like somebody who's been recently active. So what, what this search here is kind of a little bit more broad. Show me people who are recently active, that are designers, that are independent, that are fluent in English, they've worked over a thousand hours, they've been paid over a thousand dollars, high rating, but they're under ten dollars. So I'm saying show me like people that are very inexpensive here. So that's an example of filters. Okay, that's you can go in here and you can pay with this and mess around with it. Then it's gonna bring up a list of people that are potential outsourcers to be working with. So as you can see, it's gonna bring up um, all kinds of people that have had 90% or higher job success. It's gonna, each one of these people have over a thousand hours that they've worked, and each one of these people are $10 or lower on their hourly rate, hourly uh, wage. So you're gonna see their profile picture, a little description about them, you're gonna see where they are in the world. You know, Macedonia, Bangladesh, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Romania, and then now that you get this list, you can start clicking on them one at a time and you can start seeing their experience. You know, here's people that are $10 and under that have worked a lot of hours with high success. So it's very, very, it's pretty good. This is like, you know, you're getting cheap talent um, that's got a good track record. And so what you're able to do is you're able to invite them to your job if you want them to apply or you're able to save their profile if you just go, hey, this person, I wanna save them for later and maybe use them at another time. So let's say you click on their, on their name. It's gonna pull up a little bit more about them. So here's Antoinette Chang. She's $7 an hour. She's from the Philippines. She's a content writer and graphic designer. She's got some tags here about her. Um, over here on the right, you can see she's top rated, 98% job success, 2,541 hours worked. She's done 25 different jobs, okay? She's available, open as needed, open to offers. She has 24 hour response time. She has nine jobs currently in progress. So she won't be working directly for you full time, but she'll, she'll fit you in, right? So nine jobs currently in progress. So this is pretty cool. I mean, I just think it's amazing to be able to go on here right now and I could hire somebody for $7 an hour to do my graphic design or content writing. I just think that's really cool. And I don't have to commit to like a full-time job. I could, I could commit to like $100 worth of work right now, okay? I could commit to 10 hours and pay her 70 bucks. It's, it's, an, it's amazing. Where can you get this? You know, where, where can you go drop $70 and get 10 hours worth of work? If it doesn't work out, I just hire somebody new. And if it works out, then I keep hiring her. You know, and she has a, she has a motivation to do a good job because if her first 10 hours are good, then I'm gonna go ahead and give her another 10, another 10, another 10. So it's a really good win-win situation. If they're bad, I'm only out $70. It's not the end of the world, you know, and I, and I just keep moving. So outsourcing is a phenomenal thing you guys should uh, experience with. And as long as you're not spending too much money on any one individual, you don't have a lot of risk. If I just do a deal with her that's just a $7 an hour deal and I say, let's start with 10 hours, you know, it's not even that much risk. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is look at people's portfolio, okay? Especially if it's anything design related, like let's say you're looking for a t-shirt designer, a logo designer, something like that. You're gonna wanna go to the portfolio because you're gonna wanna see if their designs are any good. You're gonna wanna look at their designs. So you kind of go through and you're like, let's say you look at this preci precision import auto repairs. You're like, hey, you know that logo's decent. So this woman's seven bucks an hour. You could kind of go to her and go, hey, okay, chat with her. And you would say, you know, hey, I, do you see that precision import auto repair logo you did? Um, instead, of a, instead of like this little nuts and bolts type look and feel of it for auto repairs, so like the gear kind of an icon, what if you put like a shopping cart icon there and instead of precision import, what if you put my store name, which is, um, let's just say, uh, Poodle Products, okay, um, online store, okay. So change the. So you would go to her and say, instead of this, instead of this gear, make it a shopping cart. Instead of the word precision, replace with the word Poodle. Instead of the word um, import, re replace with the word um, products. Instead of word auto repairs, make it say online store. And and actually, instead of a shopping cart, could you have that be a Poodle? Just have it be a poodle. Keep everything else the same. So you kind of, you have to, with outsourcers, you have to be very, very specific. Very specific. I want this logo. I want these words exactly changed. But the more, but if I go to her and I say, how, how long would it, how many minutes? And so I'm going to use, I'm going to teach you guys some sales language right here. How many minutes would it take you, your best estimate, to create me a logo where the gear is a poodle, 
The word precision import is just like this, but it says Poodle products. The word auto repairs says online store and the logo is exactly like that. How many minutes? Now she's gonna get back to me and say, oh, well that would take two hours or whatever. Well, you know her hourly rate is $7 an hour. So you know that she's essentially quoted you at $14. So what I'll say is, I'll say, oh, it's two hours and your hourly rate is $7 an hour. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna create a job right now for $15 and hire you to design me this logo. If this job goes well for $15, I will hire you for more jobs. Do you agree? And then she'll either say yes or no. Of course, she doesn't want a little $15 job. She would much prefer, you know, 100 hours from you. But if you, if you give her the promise of more work if she does a good job, then she's likely to go, hey, you know what, I'll, I'll design a logo real quick. And you're making it easy. Just design one exactly the same. Or this one, School of gymnastic, Gymnastics. You know, um, you, could, you could say instead of this gymnastic loops, put a poodle there. Instead of Los Angeles, just put worldwide. Instead of school of, put worldwide um, um, store for. And then instead of gymnastics, put poodle owners. You know, worldwide store for poodle owners, whatever. And you got it exactly the same. So what happens if you make it exactly the same as one of their current portfolio products, it's gonna go really well. And you can get logos like that done for 10 or $20 really easily, okay? That's the trick. And what you would do is you would create a brand new job, and we're gonna do this live, but you would create a brand new job and you would hire, hire them for that. But I'll do that live for you in just a second. Okay, so after looking at the portfolio, um, the next thing is let's say you find somebody you wanna to invite to a job. If you click invite to job, um, like this person, Arlie P, they're a webmaster, this and that. If you press invite to job, an automatic message is gonna pop up that says, hello, I'd like to invite you to apply for my job, and you just send the invitation. You can change that if you want. So what you're able to do is go in and invite a whole bunch of people to your job. When you're inviting them to your job, that does not mean that you're hiring them. That just means that you're seeing if they're interested. So you can invite 100 people to your job and still only choose one. So don't worry, go through, find good people, invite them to your job. If they accept your invitation, then that means they're willing to be considered for the job and then you can narrow it down. Okay, and then it says invitation sent. So it's that simple, see? So I can go through and go through each person, click on them, review them, invite them to job. Click on them, review them, invite them to job. Okay, now, what do you do with all these job applicants? I like to interview them on Skype before hiring them. What I'll always do is I'll say, hey, can we, um, I'm interested in hiring you, can we chat on Skype real quick? The reason I do that is because I wanna be able to, um, anytime be able to quickly jump on Skype and be able to hire outsourcers. Skype is the way that most of your outsourcers are gonna connect because they're international. So if they're international, you gotta connect via like Skype or WhatsApp. Um, I just prefer Skype. Skype is gonna be the best, uh, most likely the best resource tool for you to connect with people. So Skype or WhatsApp, okay? Um, now, this is an example right here of something more specific that you might be looking to hire for. So this is an example of a job post. Um, now I've given you a general overview Here's an example of a job post for um, order processing Shopify. Okay, so watch this. Um, here's an example. We are operating a recently opened Shopify store and would like to hire someone to help us with order fulfillment. We are getting 200 to 300 orders per day and would like to hire someone to do the fulfillment of those orders, drop shipping. The position is available immediately. If you can start right away and are open to working anytime during the day or night, it is a plus. Shopify and other e-commerce experience is desired. You need to be detail oriented and make sure everything is processed correctly. And it is a big plus if you can work fast. Hourly work during this month of December with good possibilities for continuation. Write the code word fantastic at the end of your application so we know that this is the application you are responding to. Um, and then the skills required, data entry, order processing, processing, and Shopify. So this is an example of a job post that is a little bit more specific to the 90 day challenge or Shopify in general. So what you're looking is you're looking for somebody to process your orders and fulfill orders for you so you don't have to do it. So you, you need to imagine a day in the very near future where you're getting a lot of orders. So what you do is you basically are looking for people that can just do like copy and paste, order processing, or have experience in Shopify. But notice this, this thing at the end, write the code word fantastic. Okay, here's why you're gonna get a whole bunch of random people that are just gonna apply for your job because these people, it's kinda like, imagine like when you're looking for a job. In the past, if you're looking for a job, you might just blanket your resume out there to everybody. You might blast your resume to 100 different jobs hoping that you get seen. That's what a lot of these outsourcers do. 
they're going to find your job and they're just going to like basically blast their resume to you, um, which is basically their profile. Well, the way you can whittle through all of that is this word fantastic. If you put in a keyword in your job post and you tell them to use this code word at the end of your application, then you know anybody who uses that word, you know that they actually read your description and they're not just a bot. You know, they're not just, uh, you know, blasting. You know that they're serious. And this is also a good way to be able to weed people out, know that they're good at following instructions. Like what happens when you write up, you know, five paragraphs worth of information for them and they don't even read it. So you need to know as a very minimum, you need to know that they can read English, that they can understand English and that they can understand orders. You gave them an order, write the code word fantastic. If they can't even complete that order, do you really want to send them money? You do really want to give your hard earned money to somebody who can't even follow your instructions. So it's really good to have something like that. Now, what you do is you create a job like this and then you're going to go invite people to it. Okay. So here's another one. I need someone who's good with order fulfillment on Shopify. This is a very basic example of a basic uh, post. Okay. So you can have like, like long form like this or a little bit more basic. I need someone who is available to fulfill all of my orders on my Shopify store in a timely manner with great accuracy, data entry, order fulfillment, speed, efficiency, reliability. Both of these work. Okay. So once you have a job post on one of these networks, then you're going to want to, um, then you're going to want to actually go and uh, invite people to it. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to show you kind of in real time right now um, how to do that. And it's going to be pretty fun. Okay. So boom, boom, boom. And how are you guys enjoying this so far? We just got done with the uh, PowerPoint presentation part. I would love to hear how you guys are enjoying this as I get ready to move to actually go through the site live. Um, uh, let's see. Skype better than WhatsApp. I'm so excited. Da, 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 da. Um, Techademics is not outsourcing jobs. No. Techademics has our own in house staff for those of you that are looking for jobs with us. Okay, so let's go over to Upwork and let's do this live on the spot right now. Okay, um, let's log in. You can sign up. So if you guys are here, you're going to go to Upwork and you're going to click sign up. And you're going to go in here and you're going to sign up for an account and get started. Um, I already have an account. I'll just use one that I'm already logged into. Okay. Um, this is an old account, by the way. Just as a disclaimer, I'm in some super old accounts. So you might see those messages and stuff. I haven't used this account in a couple years. This is an old company I had. It just was saved right now. So I figured why not use it? So, um, so now we're inside Upwork. You're inside of an account. Okay. So you're going to basically, there's different things you could do. Okay. You can basically post a job, which is create a new job, or you can go to your existing jobs. You can find freelancers, okay? Or you can work with the ones you've already found. You can manage your reports if you really want to get detailed with people. And you can go and you can communicate with all your people in messages. You got a drop down search right here just for finding freelancers really quick. Um, you got your notifications and then you have your account information up top. So that's how the top works. So let's just go in and let's post a job right now. Okay, what kind of job are you posting? Are you, are you, are you posting part time or short term work or flexible? less than 30 hours, less than three months flex or something flexible, or are you doing long-term 30 plus hours a week, you know, um, long-term commitment. Let's just do a flexible basic job. Okay. Do you want to reuse a previous job or do you want to choose a new one? Let's just choose a new one. So let's say that right now, let's just say for the sake of this, let's, let's try to find a graphic designer to design print on demand stuff for your store. Okay. Somebody throw in a niche right now in the comments, somebody tell me a niche and I'm going to pick one in the comments of the live right now. Somebody give me a niche that you're in. And, um, and I'll use one of your, uh, one of your niches right now. I'll, I'll go in and post an ad for a design just as an example. So, uh, in real time, if anybody right now has a niche that you might be doing, uh, let's see vintage fashion. Is this live? Yes, it is. Kenneth watches, um, vintage fan tattoo shops, uh, mixed martial arts. I'm gonna have to choose one of these survival. Let's get a couple more niches. Throw me your niche, nursing, nurses, Steampunk, um, dog training, self-defense. Okay, let's see. NFL logos. I definitely don't want to do anything with NFL uh, branded stuff in it. Okay, let's see. Let's do. Let's do mixed martial arts. Garrett McDonald. Let's do mixed martial arts. Okay, I'm going to do that one. Okay, so what I want to do, let's, let's go into the notes. Okay, so um, upwork.com, let's do a live job posting. Okay, 
So we're going to do it in real time right now in front of all you guys. Upwork.com, let's do a live job posting. Okay. Um, niche is going to be mixed martial arts. Goal, hire a freelance or hire an outsourcer to design graphics to be used on t-shirts, mugs, um, cell phone cases, and so on. Okay? So t-shirts, mugs, cell phone cases, you name it. So um, prep work. We're going to research um, existing designs in our niche to give the outsourcer as examples. Okay? Then we're going to go to job post. Going to post a job looking for a designer and show them examples of work we want. Then we're going to go um, find freelancers. We are going to search and find great people to invite to our job. And then we're going to hire freelancers, which we might not be able to do today. I don't know how fast we're going to be able to get a response and hire somebody. Hire free freelancers. Or well, let's go interview. Interview freelancers. Um, we are going to um, talk with them on Skype to see uh, how well they interact with us. Okay, and then we're going to hire a freelancer. Find a great one to start with and try them out. And I'll do sometimes I'll hire two to three just to try them out. And then find a winner and keep them long term. When you find a great outsourcer, hold on to them and give them steady work. They will pay off in the long run as you build a good, solid working relationship with them. Soon your goal should be to manage an entire team of outsourcers. You know, from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. This leverage, let me put that in quotes, this leverage will allow you to have more time freedom to enjoy the rewards of your business instead of being a slave to it where it sucks up all your time okay so that's the concept there right we've got our niche we've got our goal we've got our prep work we're gonna go make a job post we're gonna go find and invite them we're gonna interview the ones that we like we're gonna up hiring one or maybe more and then we're gonna try to find a winner and keep them long term Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go into the niche. Mixed martial arts, goal, hire an outsourcer, prep work, research, re research existing designs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to other t-shirt uh, design related stuff and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to mixed martial arts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into either a category and try to find it through a category, if you will, or I'm going to show you how to do it just with a direct search. So, you know, obviously go to any one of these sites right here and you can see all kinds of categories, all kinds of stuff that they have. If you don't see it in the actual category, you could always go here and you could always look through and see all the stuff that they're doing, but you could always just do it like this. Mixed martial arts. Okay, and you can start to see 275 results. So what I want you to do first is I want you to begin to go in and um, start researching this stuff. I'm not exactly sure what just happened. We just lost the results there on Teespring. Okay, 275 results. Go in and start to look at designs that you like. Now, you're not going to copy somebody exactly, but start looking at designs that you like, okay? So, like, you can kind of go in and you can start to see some of these. Like, like, let's look at this shirt here. Touch me and your first mixed martial arts lesson is free, right? So, it's kind of like a fun thing that somebody can, uh, can, somebody can wear and be, be, happy, be proud of. You can target people in mixed martial arts. Well, what you're looking at in this design is you're looking at... Um, Basically, it's, a, it's, it's like a slogan or a quote. You're looking at um, like a saying, right? Or a funny quote. It's a joke. It's a slogan. It's words. Touch me and your first mixed martial arts lesson is free. So those are the words. Then you're looking at the design of the words. They're not just blank text or plain text. 
you know, they got a little bit of style to them. You know, they've chosen a font. They've chosen to bend the text around a little bit. Uh, they've chosen to make some of the text gray, some of the text pop with shadows, some of it flat, some of it curved. Um, and then you're looking at elements. The elements here is a, is a big fist, which is to symbolize the niche. Um, there's also like the little uh, reef or whatever you call that kind of design. I, I don't forget what kind of design that is. And then you got like the dashed lines and stars. So these are the elements inside of your photo. So your, your design includes text and elements. This is one of the easiest designs to do. So don't worry about copying this design exactly, but the idea here is that you want to use text and elements in your design. Um, this, this works incredibly well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is an incredi incredibly well, and all you have to do is get good at swapping out the text and swapping out the, the elements to make it yours for free. Okay? So don't copy them, though. All, all I want to tell you guys is don't just sit here and copy somebody's design. That's just... That's just lack of integrity and that's just that's just bad ethics you know don't go stealing other people's stuff model after it instead just model after it so there's an example you might want to um, create a folder uh, up on the top um, in your in your bookmarks folder or something like that somewhere just create a folder like what I might do is I might create a folder um, you know up here on the top I might go and just like I'm using Chrome okay add a folder and let's add this folder t-shirt designs Okay, all I did, by the way, was inside of Chrome right there, you've got these bookmarks right here, and you've got all these different folders. You see, do you guys notice I use a lot of folders? In case you didn't notice, a lot of, I bookmark everything. Um, but you can basically go up here at bookmarks, and you can go to your bookmark manager, and you can create a folder. All I, or you can go right-click on your toolbar if you use Chrome. I just right-clicked up on my toolbar, and you can basically, you probably can't see it because I, I don't know if it's showing you my bookmark folder or not, but you just... Um, uh, since you guys might not be able to see it because I'm sharing my screen, in Chrome, click on bookmarks and just do a Google search if you guys need this. Watch, I'm going to do it in front of you real quick. I want you to be able to do this. You know, how to add bookmarks to Chrome. Okay, there's your search. You can do this in your own research. It'll show you how right now if it's not showing on my screen. Okay, so eventually when you come across a site, you can literally just, in the URL bar, um, you can literally just hit the star over on the right and then you can choose folder t-shirt designs. I don't know if you're able to see that part, but I just put it in a folder called t-shirt designs. And that's it. It's like literally like that simple. Like it's, it's now I got a folder called t-shirt designs and there it is. So I don't know if you're able to see that or not, but let's, let me try to see if I can do it. Bookmark manager. Let's see if it shows up there. So I got a little, I got a folder here called t-shirt designs. Somebody, um, somebody's here with me. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my bookmarks manager like this. Uh, you see it? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, you can see it like that. So then I'll click on t-shirt designs and then there's all the, the t-shirt designs that I like. So mixed martial arts. Do you see what I did there? I just basically go to your bookmarks manager in Chrome, create a folder called t-shirt designs and then, and then you can just start, every time you see one, you just hit star and you add t-shirt designs. So then what I'll do is I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna find another. This is part of your research. I'm gonna find one and let's say I really like this one. Okay, here's another example. The second shirt here is another example of text and elements okay so the text is all i want to do is drink beer watch football and watch mixed martial arts okay that's the text but notice the text has different colors and different fonts and different layout but then the elements are a pint of beer a football icon and a mix and a mixed martial arts icon of someone doing a high kick so there's three elements and there's text and there's colors and this and that so text and elements are the easiest types of designs so you might want to go like, oh, let me save this one. So all I'm going to do is go to my star and save it in t-shirt designs. Now over in my bookmarks manager, I have two. I now have this one as well, beer, football, mixed martial arts. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to start by doing some research, finding good, good, good images. Um, you know, you might want to do this one. Here's text and elements again. Okay, here's this one. Never underestimate someone who trains mixed martial arts and it has a fist as the um, element and it has a, a splatter which could be represented as like a blood splatter or anything behind it and then it's got stars and it's kind of got the whole red white and blue theme and you notice the word trains like the never underestimate is in like superhero font and the word trains is in like a really kind of cool font so they're, they're creating you might look at this and go okay this is a really good design too now the reason you're going to bookmark these is because when you go set up your, your job, so see I just bookmarked that one, now I got three. When you go set up your job with the, with the job posting, with the outsourcer, 
you're going to reference some example designs. Okay, you're going to actually reference some of these. So since you're going to be referencing these, it's um, it's important that you um, it's important that you actually uh, you know just get to a point where you're able to easily reference them. You're e you're able to easily easily pull them. Okay, so that's kind of what you want to do. You want to just get to a point where anytime you want, you can easily just pull them and um, and get them going. Okay, so go find some good designs. Get to a point where you can um, get to a point where you you get like maybe 10 designs. And now the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change this to be your own. But you don't even, you don't even, you could just, you could just test this with your designer. So what you want to do is you want to change the words and change the element. Now, that's all this person did was there's a whole bunch of never underestimate shirts out there. Never underestimate someone who blank. There's a whole theme. Someone who trains mixed martial arts. So what you want to do is you want to you want to change the verbiage around. You want to change the design around. So you're going to contact the designer and say, I would like a design of this same shirt, this same design as close as possible, but I want you to change the text to say this, and I want you to change the element of the fist to be this, and I want you to change the stars to be this, and I want you to change the splatter to be this. So you give them like you know slightly change the font, slightly change the elements, and slightly change the colors, slight make some slight changes and make the text different. So you're basically giving them something to work with and say, I want the, the end image, I want to look at least this good. If you can do that, then I'll hire you for lots of work. And that's how you're gonna find a good designer. So that's what we're gonna do right now, okay? Now, what kind of quote are we gonna use? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to like, let's say Pinterest. Let's go over to Pinterest as an example and let's even go into Google. Now, with Google Images, let's do like um, MMA for mixed martial arts. Let's say MMA quotes. Okay, try to, and then you go to images. These image quotes are really fun. So let's go look at like an image quote. Um, you know, and you can like basically look and see if there's something like you could target Anderson Silva Silva fans and say, "I am not the best, but I have the potential to be something great." Um, the confidence of a fighter comes from how well he prepared himself. You know, when life knocks you down, calmly get back up, smile and say, you hit like a, <laughs> sorry, I don't want to cuss on here. Um, champions aren't made in the gyms. Champions are made from something they have deep inside of them, a desire, a dream, and a vision. So you, you basically look at, you look at like what quote might be a good, um, you know, might be a good quote. And this is where you get ideas for shirts, you know. Um, what's something, you want to think to yourself, like what's something that, um, uh, an M a mixed martial arts fighter could relate to, you know? So you might even go, okay, they're, they're in the cage, right? They fight in a cage. So let's go like, maybe put the word cage, MMA cage quotes, and see if somebody, so there's the word cage in this one, the word cage in that one. So you look and you kind of see like, what is something, what is some, something where you have the word cage in it? And then maybe that's like something that they can relate to a lot, like something that happens in the cage or whatever. And you can always even just make up your own. Right, so you go and you look at all this kind of stuff, and you kind of like get ideas there. Now, you also can do instead of MMA quotes, you can do MMA memes. That's another example. People like like love love funny stuff. You can go in and look at funny stuff. You could always just do funny MMA funny quote. Okay, instead of MMA, you could always do mixed martial arts, and then just do quotes. Mixed martial arts quotes. Okay, now you got the exact thing, and you look at all these. You could also do sayings, mixed martial arts sayings. Okay, you could also do mixed martial arts t-shirts and you're in Google images and you're able to like kind of get an idea for like what kind of shirts, you know, people are, people are doing. And um, you could also go like um, mixed martial arts instead of M MMA, maybe you could do like UFC quotes. So you go like ultimate fighting championship quotes and now you're finding like more similar quotes, you know, so it's just, you get like a little different selection of kind of the similar stuff, okay? So you can you can start to um, you can start to see like some of these are just generic quotes that are really good, and some of these are going to be you know things that are directly related to fighting. And you know like if you want to be, if you want to be a champion, you need to train like one, okay? As an example, okay. So let's go back now to the design, okay? If you want to be a champion, you need to train like one. 
So now you look at an element like this in this picture, and the word, the, the word trains could be the word champion. So you could change the word, never underestimate someone who, and it could, instead it could see, you could have that change say, if you want to be a, if you want to be a trains and replace trains with champion. So it says, if you want to be a champion, all above the, all above the fist, then replace the fist with, with like an icon graphic of like a mixed martial arts kick. So then you would go into like Google images and you would do like MMA kick, um, go to images and you could see like these kind of kicks or something like that are pretty cool. And maybe you could do like MMA kick icon. The word icon will kind of show some stuff like that. Like almost, almost something like that. And then MMA clip art, MMA clip art. That's another one. Like see these kind of designs right here? See that there's these designs. Okay. And you could even go back to what we were looking at before. You can kind of go back to this whole section and kind of go use a combination. Like up here, here's somebody using clip art right here in this example. So this all I want to do is drink beer. Notice there's three things of clip art. They're using a clip art of somebody doing a high kick and then somebody dodging the kick. They're using clip art football, clip art beer. So it can still sell well. So you can literally like use like, like something like this, like a clip art of somebody doing a high kick, okay? And maybe there's like just a really cool, um, a really cool version of this. Maybe there's like, let's say MMA fan art. Okay, maybe there's like something even cooler. If you find a really good designer, you can maybe even do, um, you know, find somebody, find something here that's like, if you find somebody who could do like cartoon graphics or whatever, like real basic kind of outlined cartoon graphics, you might even be able to have somebody take like a high kick or something like that. Um, let's say kick, fan art kick. See if we get somebody doing a kick. And you maybe can even take somebody doing something pretty amazing, like a pretty like really cool kick. Like um, instead of just an image of like two fighters or something, have somebody take like a kick like that, like a, like a really cool kick and turn it into a graphic or whatever. So that kind of stuff goes really well, okay? Like a kick like this, like imagine this kick right here, but instead of it being an actual person who's likely an actual UFC fighter, imagine if this was like a cartoon, a, a cartoon type really cool kick. So imagine you got, if you give your outsourcer, say I want this, if you find an outsourcer who's really good at design and can do like like cartoon style graphics that are really slick looking, then you might be able to grab an image like this or even an image like this right here. Look at this person doing like a crazy move like that. So there's, there's stuff like this that exists. You go and you find it and you say, okay, I want, the, I, I want the element to be a guy kicking like this and I want it to be, let's go back to that other shirt. So here's what you're doing. You're doing this research and you're basically saying, okay, you're going to the designer and saying, okay, I want to model after this shirt right here. I want to model after this shirt. Instead of the fist, in the middle, I want it to be a, 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 a silhouette of that person doing a kick as good as possible. And in, in, instead, of the, um, instead of the blood splatting or whatever, make some sort of like, it doesn't, it just some other type of background. Instead of, the, um, instead of the stars up at the top, maybe make those a belt, like a black belt, white belt, you know, maybe make it like a, like a picture of like a belt or a ribbon, change it up a little bit. Instead of never underestimate someone who trains, have it, have it say, if you want to be a champion and then have the person kicking, then instead of mixed martial arts on the bottom, have it say, you need to train like one. Because remember what we're doing is we're taking this quote right here. If you want to be a champion, you need to train like one. And then we're putting it on a shirt right here. If you want to be a champion, with the, then the kick icon, you need to train like one. And just like that, we've come up with an idea for the mixed martial arts niche based and that we can easily explain to, uh, to an outsourcer, right? So that's really what, what we're looking to do is we're looking to basically get to a point where we can easily explain something like this. Um, and so let's, let's go in and let's look at it. So let's go to Google and let's, let's do this one. Never underestimate someone who trains mixed martial arts. Let's get, um, let's open up a new Google image and let's, let's figure out, let's see if we can get an image for it. Okay, images. Never estimate someone trains martial arts. T-shirt. Okay, so, and also look at all these other ideas that you're getting too. 
Never underestimate, look at, never underestimate an old man who loves bodybuilding. So do you see how there's, do you see how there's a picture of an old, do you see how that's like a, a superhero type graphic? This is what I'm talking about. Do you see how they went to a designer and basically said, design me like a, a muscular superhero type person who's a little bit older. And then look at this person, look at this targeting. Never underestimate an old man who loves bodybuilding. And they're getting like a super ripped, super buff bodybuilder who's eating like a protein bar. And, you know, because somebody who spends all that time in the gym, that's like what they know. That's all that they know. So you can really get ideas off stuff like that. And you can give that as an example too. So when I'm going into this job post, job posting, let's go back to Upwork now. When I'm getting a job posting, um, I'm going to go here to design and creative and I'm going to get somebody um, who's going to basically design and creative. I can go with somebody to do logo design, illustration, graphic design, and I can start choosing categories. Example, um, t-shirt designer wanted. I'll provide you the templates you design the shirts for me. Okay, something like that. Describe the work to be done. Um, I have several existing t-shirt designs for you to model after. I will provide you with examples of the look and feel for each t-shirt design. I need you to create designs that are equal to, let me put this in all caps, equal to or better than the designs I give you. We will start with one design. If you do a good job, then I will hire you for 10 designs. If you do a great job with 10 designs, then I will hire you for 10 designs per week on a long-term contract. Let's start with your first design and see how well you do. Okay, here is an example of the quality of work I'm looking for. Okay, now you can upload, you can drag and upload, or we can just go here to our bookmark folder and we can basically go to that, go to that site, double click on it, take us right into the site, grab the URL, uh, and anything after the question mark, you could just erase. So you see how it's like a long URL? The way URLs work is anything after the question mark, you can, you can erase, and you can actually have like a short URL. Everything after the question mark is just added on stuff, okay? So it doesn't matter though. You can even paste the long one. So what I'll do here is I'll just go, um, example, t-shirt that t-shirt uses text and graphic elements I'd like for you to change the text to the words that I provide you I'd like for you to change the fonts and the colors slightly to make them look good and be unique and I'd like you to add elements to the design that you find on your own based on ideas that I give you. Your design needs to be at least as good or better than the design above. If you are interested in this job please follow the instructions below. Add the word, um, and then you make, make up a code word, right? Add the word, um, and let's say the word is gonna be fantastic in your um, application response. Add the word fantastic in your application response or you will not be considered. We need to know that you are good at following clear 
um, instructions. We look forward to working with you. Okay, so there's a job post. And I took the time to write up kind of a long one. Now listen, it's worth it, okay? And this is not like the perfect post. I'm just showing you. What we did is we linked to an example up there. Now what I might do is I might save those and attach up to five files, or I might be even more specific. Okay, where will this work be used? It'll be used on the web. Where are you in the life cycle of this project? I have designs, I have specifications, I have an idea. It's one of these two right here. Um, let's just say I have designs, okay? How many freelancers do you need to hire? I wanna hire one. What type of project do you have? Let's call it an ongoing project. What type of work will the freelancer be doing? Let's just have them doing, you know, brand design. Which application should the freestyle have experience with? Let's put in just like Photoshop, okay? Um, enter skills needed, graphic design, Photoshop, okay? Um, that's fine. And then, okay, you can pay a fixed price or pay by the hour. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do pay by the hour, but here's the key, guys. I'm gonna change it at the last minute. I'm gonna do pay by the hour, but I'm not actually gonna hire them by the hour. I'm gonna hire them by a fixed price. But if you put a fixed price, they're gonna be turned off. If you put a fixed price right now that says, hey, I'll pay you 10 bucks for a t-shirt, you're not gonna get anybody serious. They're gonna be like, 10 bucks, is not worth my time. But if you get somebody, if you say you're gonna pay by the hour, they're like, okay, I'm looking for a full-time job, I'll do this. So just leave it paid by the hour. What's your desired experience level? Um, you know, you could put whatever, entry, intermediate, whatever. Um, we'll just do entry. How long do you expect this job to last? Let's put more than six months. What time commitment is required? I don't know. Do you want freelancers? Do you want freelancers to find and apply for your job? Yes, that's fine. Um, or you could say only users on Upwork. If you want your job to be public or not, it doesn't matter. Um, do you have freelancers in mind you'd like to invite? No. Preferred qualifications? No. Screening? No. I'm not too worried about all this. Um, you can do that, but I, I don't. I don't really worry that much about it. Cover letter? I don't even require a cover letter. Here's why, because and l let me explain to you. At the end of the day, I'm probably not going to hire anybody that applies. Now, if they follow these instructions and they write in like they write in that word fantastic and they're really good, maybe. But I'm probably I'm I'm going to make it as easy as possible for people to apply. Okay, let's post this job. And it's free to post the job, so don't even worry about it. Just post it. Okay. Um, your job is live. Here are freelancers who match the skills you're looking for. Stay safe, only pay freelancers through Upwork, okay? Keep in mind, don't get scammed by people. These freelancers might want money somewhere else, don't do it. And don't pay them outside of Upwork, pay them right inside Upwork. I submit. Okay, now that we have a job, we, we now have a job we can invite people to. So, so here we're gonna go, we're gonna search for freelancers and we're gonna search and we're gonna do like t-shirt design, okay? We're gonna go ahead and search t-shirt design as a basic search, okay? It's gonna bring up all kinds of people, but you're gonna hit these filters over here, okay? We're gonna start specific, okay? Remember how I said you're gonna start, you're gonna start narrow and you're gonna go broad? We're gonna go here to these filters, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say people have earned over $10,000, 90% and up, um, $60 and above, with over 1,000 hours build, um, any category, let's do graphic design. Let's make them fluent. And independent freelancers within two weeks. Okay? That's, what's cool is that we just narrow this down literally to like, to eight people. See how we went from thousands? See this little number to the side? There's eight people now. That is, so we're gonna start very narrow. Here's eight people who are essentially some of the best designers on Upwork. This doesn't mean I'm gonna hire them. But here's eight people. So this gives me an example of what's available. Okay, so let's look at this. Even though I'm gonna start out of my range, I'm gonna go narrow, okay? So here's an Odesk top 2% freelancer, top senior uh, graphics freelancer, four jobs in progress. Um, and you kinda like see all the stuff that they're doing. You can see their portfolio. You know, they, they can do background removals. Um, all kinds of stuff. So here's somebody who's like, just does a ton of stuff, right? So you can kind of come in here and kind of look at all the stuff they do. And you can kind of see if it's even worth it. But you want to start at the top and kind of see what people are doing. You can see like an example is like they put like somebody's, somebody's face on a Superman outfit and just stuff like this. They're, they've got before and after pictures. 
you can really kind of come in here and look at some of their stuff. You might need to flip through for a while though to like find like their t-shirt designs or something like that. You got all categories. So you can always go here and go illustration, graphic design, other design. And you can kind of go through all their categories and kind of see what they have. A lot of times they'll have t-shirt design. Okay, so there's an example. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to this next person. Same thing, it's gonna pull up this person now, Pia, $62 an hour from the United States. So even though it's an outsourcer, this person's in the United States and has done a lot of work here. And you kind of see all the work. And they've got a portfolio. You can see their categories, presentations, logo design, graphic design, whatever. And you can see um, they do marketing collateral, collateral design, all kinds of stuff. Great, uh, great graphics. So see, you have really quality people on the high end. You can kind of see like all the stuff they do. Like you can click on something they do. Like this was a print and digital book series from concept to creation. View the, view the full version here. So literally you can see like what, what, this person, um, what this person has created, what this person's capable of. It's really cool, right? So look at, look at the kind of quality that's available for you. So you look at somebody like this and go, wow, when you're ready, this person could design ads for you. This person could, could design presentations. Look at these kind of graphics, really clean graphics, right? So they could, you could easily give them like a UFC fighter or a bodybuilder or something like that, and they'll do an amazing graphic. Now, you might be thinking, well, well Chris, you know, $60 um, dollars an hour, I can't afford that. Well, once you start learning how to sell online, $60 an hour is nothing for a graphic designer who can design t-shirts that sell. You know, if you're making $5,000 per design, then suddenly it becomes very cheap. So you can kind of see like th this person did concept to creation, this whole entire thing here, this whole entire book. So there's some quality people. You're gonna deal with some. You're gonna deal with some quality people when you start going through this. Okay, so let's go back. So you can see there. You start at the top and you see what's you see what's possible. Now, we're gonna change just one thing. Instead of ten thousand dollars earned, let's go change it down to one thousand earned. Okay. Actually, let's change two things. And then instead of uh, sixty dollars and above, let's do it ten dollars and below. Okay. Now. On the other end, now that you've kind of seen some of the good people, let's look at what the inexpensive people are that have earned a lot of money. Like here's somebody who's earned $70,000. Um, I'm a full-time professional Upwork freelancer working last eight years. So they've done $70,000 over the last eight years doing this kind of stuff. They obviously, you know, under $10 an hour and they obviously have so much, so much stuff here. There are categories of stuff. They do logo design, photography, graphic design. And you can kind of see like all the different kind of stuff they do. Same thing. You can kind of come in here. They do product enhancement, color correction. Um, they can do a lot. Product enhancement. Maybe they can look at product retouching. So they can basically help uh, improve any of the photos you have to make your photos of Shopify products better. So do you see how you have, you see how you have the ability to look here and find like really cool stuff? That's the potential that exists. So you go and you find these people. Okay. So that's, that's really what you're doing. Um, you know, as you're basically coming in and you're, you can find people for accounting, sales and marketing, customer support, admin support, legal, translation, writing, design creative, engineering architecture. Look at all these cool things. You can find people everywhere. Whatever you need people to do, there's just so much stuff um, that you can have people do. So have some fun with this, okay? Illustration, for example, you know, like, and you can see what they do. Fast and expert graphic designer, graphic artist, photo editing, graphic creator, da, 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 da. So there's really cool stuff that you can do, okay? Um, you know, so you could even do like the exact phrase t-shirt, apply. And you can kind of see like also in the title, see how they have the title? You could do that in an exact. You can say title search, um, t-shirt. And t-shirt with a dash maybe even, maybe even isn't the one that you want. But you can go in here and you can kind of find like people with exact searches. So here's two, T-shirt, T-shirt design. And you go in and find like, here's two great people. Look, 20,000 earned, 10,000 earned at only $10 an hour, graphic designer, T-shirt design, vector artworks. So they've earned a lot. Let's see if this person's any good. So you're basically just going through and you're finding, it's like a fun thing to do. You're going through and you're finding outsourcers. Let's look, let's see some of their stuff, okay? Look at this, you know? When I play with my tackle, my wife gets jealous. Okay, my wife gets jealous when I play with my tackle. It's a funny like husband and wife 
you know, married married men could wear this this kind of a shirt right here, and it's kind of like a joke. But look, they designed this. Now look at the elements here. It's text and elements. So you know this designer has the ability to do text and elements as well. And you also know they have the ability to do ads because these are ads right there they're looking at. So text and elements, refuse to sync. See these text and elements? So you already know you've got somebody who's, um, who's got text and elements down. Look at this. I'm the current bringer of power, Lord of the... Okay, so here's somebody who understands the elements, the everything. So here's a good person. Um, Michael Lenga, graphic designer, vector artwork, 96% job success from the Philippines, $10 an hour, 20K earned. So watch this, invite to job. And then you could go, Michael, I love your uh, graphic, I love your t-shirt designs. Um, I'm looking for very similar designs. Let me know if you want to start off with one design and if it works well, we can do 10 more. Okay, and invite them to choose a job you want to invite them to. I'm going to design, invite them to t-shirt designer wanted, send invitation. Boom. I just sent, so I basically found somebody and invited them to the job. So now Michael Longa is invited to the job. Now remember how I found Michael. What I did was I went here to advanced search and I went and found people that had t-shirt in their title search. But then I also put in a whole bunch of more criteria they had to have. And look, it only brought down two people. Only two people fit all that criteria. Let's look at this one. And all you gotta do is look at their portfolio. Okay, usually they have stuff here. The recent portfolio item just has one, but sometimes they have links. Our portfolio links, logo experts, touch point, behave. So you could always like clip those links and go check them out. Let's go check and see if this portfolio is any good. So they have pretty good designs here, like Apple game designs, um, a logo design. I mean, it's pretty good website design, credit cards. So you can kind of look and you can kind of go, okay, they, you know, they got some interesting designs that could look good. So you go, go there. Okay. That, that was one. And then you could also go to like logo experts, but it doesn't matter. You could always contact this person on Skype and say, Hey, listen, send me some t-shirts that you've designed. Okay. You can look at these logos and see if you like them, see if any of them are any good. I think this person's so, so not that good. And they don't really show like a lot of t-shirts, so I'll probably skip out on it. I mean, this this starting to get better. Like they're starting to get graphic elements inside some of these, but the font was very basic. But yeah, you go through and you start looking. Okay, they at least they do a lot of work. Okay, so you can basically like go through and scroll through all their stuff and go. Okay, look, they're getting I they're getting good use of of um, words and um, elements next to them. So you just go and you do the research. Okay. Now, if you like them, you could always invite them. Invite. It doesn't hurt you just do a send invitation, invitation sent. So I just invited them two to the job. Now, I want to get more than two. So I want $10 and below, but instead of 1,000 hours build, um, see how I can kind of start changing things? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go, okay, let's go to any amount earned and let's do like another, let's do, let's do another search. Or let's even just start over. Let's start the search over. Go back to Upwork and let's go to find freelancers. And let's search for freelancers, do a title search and put the word t-shirt. Okay, so here's a bunch of people that have the word t-shirt in it. Now you'll notice um, not all of them are ranked well. So let's put in some filters. So I started over. Let's put in this filters um, fluent English and let's do Ten dollars an hour and below. Let's do you know eighty percent and up job success. Okay, so what we've done is we just we just basically got thirty people here. See, it says now it says thirty. So now we have thirty people that you know are potential people. You know, so now I go logo T-shirt. So then you just start going through the portfolio, and you just spend your time. Look, if you're looking for somebody, spend your time. Let's go let, go look at their go look at their designs, and you got to have kind of a good eye for design. You know, you got to kind of say okay. You know, do they have, you know, they have the ability to make fonts big, small, this and that. They're, you obviously are working with fonts and text. So you can start to get an idea. You know, cycling, the West Coast, got a flag in the middle, a biker. 
you start to say, okay, they, they, they understand the use of elements. And if you see stuff that looks good, I always get wary if they have designs that look bad, but if you see stuff that looks good, you can kind of go in there. Okay, then you just go to the next one. Same thing, you go to the next one, and you just literally can, can go to, you know, their portfolio, t-shirt designs, and I don't know what this is, it's kind of coming in really weird. I have no idea what's going on. Those, those are going in way too big. So that their portfolio is looking kind of weird, so I'm going to skip on them. And just keep going. Go through, and you've got to look at designs. You've got to have a good eye for design. You're finding T-shirt designers, um, flyer designers, stuff like that, Facebook ads, business cards. And look, this isn't a sexy job. It's a, it's a, it's a boring job, but you're, you're going to give somebody money, right? So... The harder you work, the luckier you get, you know, kind of a design. Image manipulation, so they could do some cool stuff. Image to cartoon. Okay, so this is what we were just talking about. So this person has skills at turning an image into a cartoon. And so that's kind of what, that's kind of what we talked about. Remember we talked about turning like um, uh, an image into a cartoon? And this person has that exact skill. So image to cartoon character. So if you know they do something like that, then you might want to go to them and say, you know, invite to job. I forgot which one it is. Let's just say it's this one. I don't know if it was. Let me see. I forget which one it was already. Was it this one? Yeah. So this person here, invite to job. And then say, um, I have a few images I'd like turned into cartoons and, um, and used on t-shirt designs for example could you turn this image into a cartoon type image easily and then I'll basically like link over to this image I'll go and I'll view that image and there's that image right there and I'll just grab a direct link to it and put it like that and then I'll send it and so I've invited her to the job and gave her an example um, image to turn into a cartoon. And that's what you do. You work your way down. You're finding people. I'm in the under $10 an hour range. So there's less risk, but you're also going to get people who might not be as good. But every once in a while in here, you're finding people who will do good. Now, once, once I get people that are applying to my jobs, okay? So when I go people that are applying to my jobs, what's going to happen here? So I got two new proposals already since we just started this. Okay, so here's two people, you know, t-shirt designer, illustrator, 82 hours, $12. This person here, Sam Wick, um, is applying. They put, a, they put their t-shirt portfolio right here. So somebody's applying and they're, they're letting me see their t-shirts. Okay, they want me to download it. It's a PDF, so that's, that's doable. Downloading a PDF. I'm always weary of files to have to download. Um, oh, I don't have enough, you know me, I don't have enough room on my computer. So, dang. Um, you know, but whatever. They've got t-shirts here that I can look at. So, you look at these designs, they're pretty cool, they're pretty clean designs. Okay, t-shirt design, t-shirt design. These designs are all pretty clean. Um, and this person's, you know, applying. I like the first designs a little bit better than all these ones. I don't really like these ones as much. So what I'll do is I'll be like more specific. I'll be like, I'll show them which designs I like. You know, I like the pie day design. Um, I like the fonts in the shoot like a girl, whatever. I'm not antisocial. So this person here, you can, now met, you can now communicate with them. You just click on their profile, communicate, and be like, I like a few of, I like the first few designs listed in your portfolio here on Upwork. Did you take a look at the design I linked in my job post? How many minutes would it take you to make a design, make an original design like that for me? Okay, so you start communicating back and forth with your people. Okay? so. That's what you're going to do. You're going to kind of go in 
Oh, whoops, I, I contact the wrong person, whatever. So I just, whatever, it is what it is. I already, I already sent him the message. But I actually messaged up the wrong guy. Um, so let's go ahead and just copy and paste this message to the other guy. <laughs> let's do it to this guy too. Um, send message. Okay, so, you know, you just start a conversation with them. Now what's going to happen is you're going to have it, you're going to have this conversation go back. And what I'll often do is I'll ask them if they're on Skype. I'll be like, hey, you know what, can, can we chat? I barely checked this. Can we, ch can we chat on Skype? Okay. Now notice these responses came in fast, so I likely don't have. Um, I likely don't have. Uh, they didn't follow the instructions. That doesn't mean they're bad, but I don't see anywhere that they that they followed the instructions. So, um, but this this is what I would do though. Regardless, I would go in. I'd have a conversation with them. I try to move them over to Skype. Eventually, what I'm going to do is this. If I'm going to hire somebody, okay. Watch what I'm going to do real quickly. Once, once, once I chat with Sam and I'm like, all right, how long is it going to take you? Let's say Sam says that it's going to take an hour for a design like that. Well, that's $12 an hour. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my job. Okay, my jobs. Here's my job right here, right? So I'm going to go to my job. I'm going to edit the job. Okay? And instead of making it an hourly job, so let's go down. Okay? Ongoing project, all this kind of stuff, entry level, what time commitment, what is all your rates, what is all your stuff. Instead of doing like this job that you have here, and you can leave this one going because I might be inviting a bunch of people to this. Watch what I'm going to do, okay? Instead of doing this whole job here, watch this. I'm going to post a new job, part-time. So let's say that guy Sam wants to do it. I got a, I got a new job here. It's going to be a design illustration, single t-shirt design for $15. Um, this is a private job for a one-time t-shirt design for $15 flat project fee. I need at least three revisions to make sure the design is good. As long as this project goes well, I am ready to pay for 10 more designs. Okay, now this is a single design, okay? I wanna hire one freelancer, and this doesn't matter as much, graphic design skills, one-time project. Now, instead of pay by the hour, I'm gonna do fixed price. <coughs> fixed price, $15, okay? Desired experience levels doesn't matter anymore. And then only free freelancers I've invited can find this. And then do you have a freelancer you'd want to invite? And you can actually put in, that, um, put in that person. You can go in and put in that person, but you don't have to. You could always just leave that blank. Nothing else, no require level, no, nothing level here. Post this job. And now, what you, what you do now is when I'm in this conversation, so now it's, what I just did was I just created a new job. When I'm in this conversation <coughs> here, um, You'll know, notice when I go to jobs, I actually have two jobs now. I've got this basic one that I'm going to go and get all the applications to, and then I have this private one for the person I'm going to hire, invite only. So what I'm doing now is I've got three, three messages, so watch this, four proposals came in. And so now what I'm going to do is when I'm ready, I'm going to go through, and when I'm ready, what I would do is I'd go to this person's profile, Sam Wick, okay? And what this person right here, there's, you know, there's, I think the way to do it, let me see if I can go in here, copy this profile link right here. But I just need to remember the name Sam Wick because I forgot. But I think you just copy their profile link and then you go to your other job, my jobs, and you just invite them. So you go here, there's your job. And then you have the ability to invite them to this job. Let's see, I don't know if you could just go to the straight link. Invite to job. That's all. You just go to their straight link. I just pl placed it in a straight link. But now I invite them to the single t-shirt design for $15. See that? So initially I invited, he, he's, he's applying what the t-shirt design wanted. So then what you do, so, is, so in a, in, all I got to do now is when I invite people, I'm inviting people to the main job. So I have two actual jobs. I've got one job that I want to get everybody into. See this? T-shirt designer wanted. I've got this one job on my jobs. I've got this one job right here. 
where I'm going to invite everybody into. And after, like, let's say, three days, I'm going to narrow it down to like who I want. Invite everybody here. But then once you find somebody good, invite them to this job here. So once you find all these people, and you might be able to do it from right here. We're going to try this again. Here's all these people applying for your job. Okay? And you can also do thumbs up, thumbs down. So let's say you find somebody. And see how it says invited? This was somebody I invited myself. So I'm even more likely... If I invited somebody, I thought they might be good. So now you're going to look at their stuff and let's say they're good. This is the person that could do the cartoon job. Remember, she just applied. So look at this, thumbs up and I'm creating a short list of people I like and don't like. Okay, so this is the person that could do the graphic um, thing or whatever. I'm going to click on her. Okay, and you know, I'm going to look at her. Now what I could do is I can basically see how it says hire freelancer. I don't want to necessarily hire her for this job. Okay, I want to invite her to the other one. So see how she has her, her profile link here? Copy the link. Paste it. And this brings up her, um, her main profile. Now I can invite to job. And I can invite her to this one, the t-shirt design for 15. And then I'm invited to that one. She accepts, she hires. So I'm going to have a conversation with her. Once I get to the point I'm ready to hire her, I'm going to say, okay, how much? $15? Or if she says it takes one hour, I'm going to say, okay, $7.50. So you're gonna do a small amount, create a new job, and then pay that way. So that's the key to outsourcing, you guys, is you basically create one main job, you find a whole bunch of people, you narrow down the people you wanna hire, and then you create these little, these little one-time jobs that are private, invitation only, and you invite the person to that job. So what you're doing is your first job is always an hourly rate, and your second jobs, or your private jobs are always, um, you know, so let, let's put in there, um, let's go real quick. Outsourcing tips for Odesk. Let's write some of these up and then I'll wrap up the, the training. Outsourcing tips for, for Odesk. Okay. Um, create a, I mean, don't do all of these. Okay. Create a general job post to invite a ton of great people to. Narrow down your candidates by reviewing portfolios and messaging them. Um, once you find a great, a good person, find out how long they would take, okay, uh, to complete the, you know, the task or whatever it is you're trying to outsource, okay? Um, then calculate that time by their hourly rate. This gives you an idea for how much money you are going to pay for the task. If that dollar amount is good, then create a new job post at a fixed price. Invite them to the new job post and hire them for that new post you can keep your current post open so more people keep applying. You never know if that designer was tough to work with. Let's say outsourcer. You never know if that outsourcer. So backups are good. Um, if they do a good job for your one-time task, then create another new job post. This new job post can be for 5x the amount or 10x the amount for more tasks. You don't have to pay it all up front. You can pay only a small percentage up front. The rest gets paid upon completion. So it's not very risky for you. Always pay directly through Upwork.com and never direct <coughs> to the outsourcer. Okay. Also, never give your outsourcer full permission to access your private data without being sure that you can trust them. If you have questions regarding 
staff accounts and Shopify, you can contact Shopify support at HTTP. Shopify.com slash support. Um, so, in a nutshell, if you hire some, an outsourcer to work with you in Shopify, then you can, um, then what you can do is you can, uh, you can add them as a staff account with limited access, but you've just got to be a little bit careful. They won't have access to like spend money and stuff like that, but you know, you want to find somebody good. If you're giving somebody access to your store, you don't want to hire like the bottom of the barrel person. You want to find somebody pretty good. But so far we've had pretty good success with that. So those are some outsourcing tips. Hopefully that this training has been helpful. It's another training here. I've got to get into my next appointment. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this outsourcing training. Um, sorry for starting a few minutes late and appreciate everybody for hanging on. Let me read the comments real quick. Did you guys enjoy this? What did you think about, uh, what did you think about today's training? Did you find it valuable? Did you learn some new things about outsourcing? Did you appreciate some of the insider tips and techniques? Um, did you guys appreciate kind of like how to be able to narrow it down? What did you guys think? You guys still throwing out niches? Dun, dun, dun. Thank you, thank you, awesome. Uh, Tim Herman says, who's everybody using for drop shipping t-shirts? We're using print on demand sites like Gearbubble, Viral Style, Teespring, um, T-Launch, Printful. Go, go back to one of our days, we cover print on demand in detail. Okay, very valuable training, you guys liked it? All right, well there's some tips on how to outsource. Um, my method has worked, you guys, I've, I've done, I, I think between like three outsourcing accounts, I think I've outsourced like over $100,000 on that side alone, so I have a fair amount of experience with it, and it works. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This training alone, uh, obviously, I've had people pay good money just for this training alone, so hopefully you enjoyed the, uh, the training as part of the 90 day challenge. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off. I had a pleasure training and, and sharing with you guys. Catch you guys in the next one.